And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This is the most amazing story of the day. (laughs) Maybe one of the most amazing stories of the year so far. It's amazing because it's something we talk about all the time. I'm fascinated with the topic of people in over their heads. I'm fascinated with another topic, and that's not necessarily the case uh, when we talk about this particular story, but I'm fascinated with losers. I'm fascinated with people who uh, run up their debts to stratospheric levels and then don't uh, pay their bills or can't pay their bills or won't pay their bills. I'm fascinated with it. And uh, usually I'm talking about some nameless, faceless person. Because when you think of people being foreclosed upon or you think of people with too much debt, you think of, you know, Joe Boring living in some suburb that's about 70 miles outside the city who bought a $220,000 house, which is cheap compared to other houses, but he couldn't even afford that. But Joe Boring thought that would be a a good investment. Maybe he could even flip the house and make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then Joe Boring had no idea how much it would cost to furnish a house, how much it costs to repair the toilet when it breaks. You can't call the building manager. Uh, Joe Boring uh, has no idea how much it costs to water the lawn in a, like here in Southern California, it's essentially desert conditions. And uh, suddenly, Joe, who thought he had a good investment, uh, is in over his head as he's been buying, you know, uh, he's been buying furniture, he's been buying uh, outdoor furniture, he had a pool put in, he had a fence put around the pool. Suddenly, Joe is tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, and he has no idea how he got there. Now, we've talked about this, and I know Joe Boring is a listener. <laughs> in fact, there are many Joe Borings out there. Who had no idea that gas was going to be four fifty a gallon, and they'd have to find some way to drive from Palmdale or Rialto or Rancho Cucamonga to say downtown Los Angeles to go to work. And these are the people who are abandoning their homes. These are the people who are becoming foreclosed upon. And we, we've had this conversation many times. So imagine my surprise when I wake up this morning. And I'm still on Paris time, so I woke up at 3.45 a.m., which is just past noon in Paris. I still haven't adjusted yet. So I wake up, and uh, the L.A. Times has gone thunk up against my door, which it's not supposed to because I'm canceling the L.A. Times, but there it was. So I go out, and I pick up the paper, and, and, and what is on the front page of the business section? Well, another foreclosure. Another foreclosure. I mean, there you go. Another one. Another one. But this isn't Joe Boring. And this person does not live in Rancho Cucamonga or Rancho Santa Margarita. Or, um, you know, Palmdale or... No. This person lives right here in town. And not only that, this person has a name you would know. Have you seen this story? Listen to this story. This is amazing. This is amazing. And by the way, uh, this person is a listener. He's called into the show. He's somebody who I have met more than once. And somebody I like very much. I hate to see this. But 
I'd be remiss if I did not mention this story. I, I, it's my job. Sorry. I got to talk about this. Got to. Got to. Here's the story from the Los Angeles Times. Ed McMahon, the longtime sidekick to Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show, who was my idol, by the way. Johnny Carson, uh, there's no words as a broadcaster to say what Johnny Carson meant to people like me. Wow. And Ed, just by, uh, just by being in uh, Johnny's aura. Okay. Ed McMahon is fighting to avoid foreclosure on his multi-million dollar Beverly Hills estate. McMahon defaulted on, get this, you, you were having a hard time making that uh, $2,700 a month payment on your little house. Yeah, Ed has defaulted on his $4.8 million in mortgage loans with a unit of Countrywide Financial Corporation. Aren't they bankrupt themselves? Or <laughs> This whole house of cards is coming down. You know what I'm saying? It's all coming down. Yeah, I don't think they were, they were sold to Bank of America for a song. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, so Countrywide has filed a notice of default against Ed McMahon. They did it in March. This according to Foreclosure Radar, a company that sells default data pulled from public records. It says here the 85-year-old pitch man for various products, including American Family Publishers. Where's the prize patrol when you need them? <laughs> Is the highest profile person to be caught on the nationwide real estate downturn and mortgage crunch. McMahon spokesman Howard Bragman said late Tuesday, he's not alone. There are plenty of people affected by the weak economy, bad housing market, or bad health. By the way, is he getting paid? How do you have a spokesman when you can't afford to pay your mortgage? <laughs> Howard, the check's going to be a little late this week. <laughs> Says here an article in Business on Wednesday. That's the business section of the Los Angeles Times uh, about the possible foreclosure of television personality Ed McMahon's house quoted real estate agent Alex Davis as saying 100 paparazzi had gathered around the nearby home of Britney Spears. In fact, Davis said the paparazzi had been outside the gate of the community, not an individual house, and he did not estimate their number. Bragman said McMahon fell and broke his neck about 18 months ago. And has been unable to work since. Ed, I got a question for you. And I, I do love you to death. I do. All right, so you're 83 and, and you're about to break your neck. <laughs> Why are you still working? You're 83. You hosted Star Search, for God's sake. You did a million billion commercials. Didn't you put any of that money away? I mean, I, I wish I had driven up to your place and had this conversation. If I knew this was an issue, I would have driven right over there. I know where Ed lives. I would have driven right over there and had this heart-to-heart uh, -heart with him. How do, how do you do all those things over the years? For God's sake, the guy did Budweiser commercials for like 100 years. How do you not put a couple of bucks away so that at 83, breaking your neck is not going to put you uh, out of your house? When you're 83, you're more likely to break your neck. Holy schmagoli. I can't believe this. How, how, how do you do that? How do you be... I mean, you, you're sitting next to Johnny Carson, okay? <laughs> you're, you're doing live commercials on The Tonight Show. Every Christmas, there go the Clydesdales, and you would hear Ed McMahon's voice talking about Budweiser. Every year. He had the prize patrol. He had how many other TV shows he was doing, commercials for insurance companies. I mean, he was everywhere. Ed, how can you be 83 and not have money? What are you doing? You're setting bonfires with $100 bills in your backyard. What are you doing over there? Wow. 
Anyway, this is the publicist speaking. And again, the uh, <laughs> I, I can't believe you would have a publicist when you're broke. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I love my publicist, Ron Hoffman, to death. But if I'm ever having financial trouble, I'm going down the line. It's going to be the line item veto. It's the first thing being crossed off the list. If I'm about to be thrown out of my house, the last thing I need is a publicist. <laughs> Tell you what. Anyway, uh, Brag- this Howard Bragman, the spokesperson for Ed McMahon, said, The ideal situation would be that he would be healthy and able to earn a living to pay for his house. He's 85 years old! And I'm not saying that as a diss against Ed. Ed, you should be in Palm Springs. You should be up in Santa Barbara County. You should own the house next door to me. Uh, Ed, you should be uh, living in Costa Rica. I mean, you're 85. <laughs> you, you should be enjoying life. Seriously. He's 85. He has to be able to work to pay for his house. When's he going to retire? Is he 110? Says here, the six-bedroom, five-bath home on Crest Court. Now we all know where Ed lives. So you want to get shots of the moving van? There it is. It's listed for sale at $6.25 million. According to his real estate agent, Alex Davis of Alex Davis Estates, who has the listing. It's been on the market for two years, he said. Right about the time he broke his neck, I guess. It would seem to be an ideal home, says the Los Angeles Times. The Hilton and Highland Luxury Real Estate website described the home as a celebrity Mediterranean estate in the prestigious Beverly Hills gated community of The Summit, which overlooks Coldwater Canyon and Mulholland Drive. Well, I I just must say, if I'm 83 and I'm a little short on cashola, maybe I'm not living at the intersection of Coldwater Canyon and Mulholland. Maybe I move down the hill a little bit. And then they quote the uh, <laughs> they quote the website here, the, the the listing on the website. Here's the listing: This once in a lifetime offering is full of charm and character. The foreign imported doors and meticulously chosen fireplaces are unlike any other, the website boasts. It also has a master suite with his and her baths and closets overlooking the yard and a sweeping canyon. But Davis said the summit has been a difficult area to sell. Who's paying $6 million for houses right now in L.A.? Seriously. Davis said in the midst of trying to sell this property, there were a lot of distractions, citing paparazzi who have converged around the nearby home of Britney Spears. This is quite a neighborhood. He said when we were trying to sell the house one time, there were about 100 paparazzi there. Another difficulty for the area has been a mold contamination that has plagued a number of homes, including McMahon's, and one purchased for the director of the Getty Museum. McMahon won a $7.2 million insurance settlement after claiming that mold in his house killed his dog, Muffin. Let that sink in? Yes. Okay. And sickened him and his wife. That's not funny. According to a lawsuit he filed, the trouble began with a pipe broke and water flooded a den. Mold was later discovered throughout the house. I, I had that very problem, by the way. Had to have my house practically torn down. Says here McMahon and his wife Pamela blamed faulty cleanup. At the time McMahon had said when your family loses its health and your home is a wasteland, that's a colossal disaster. Both the Highland website and Christie's Greatest Estates.com list the property built in 1989 at $5.75 million. Davis said it was still priced at $6.25 million. Well, it looks to me like nobody's buying it for six point two five million or five point seven five million. Then probably nobody buying it for four point seven five million. If it's been on the market for two years, perhaps it's time to trim the price again. Now get this. And again, you know, if I had 
25 years of doing Budweiser commercials on TV. You're not going to see me at 83 humping AARP insurance on TV or something. I'm going to be laying on a beach somewhere. Seriously. Says here, McMahon took out two loans on the property, totaling $4.5 million, and later borrowed an additional $300,000 against the house, according to Foreclosure Radar. The loans were obtained through Countrywide Home Loans Incorporated. Now, again, I'm just going to ask a question here. I'm not going to make a statement because you can get sued when you make a statement. So here's a question. Don't they describe Countrywide Mortgage Company as a subprime lender? You know, way back, and I mean way back, when I didn't make the money I make now and I didn't have the credit rating I have now, I had a mortgage with Countrywide. But not today. Today. So if you have a mortgage with Countrywide, I'm just asking a question here. I'm not making a statement. What does that mean? Don't you have like a private banker or you couldn't you go down to Beverly Hills to like, you know, the city, uh, uh, city national bank or Wells Fargo or something and take out a mortgage down there? Why do you have to go to Countrywide? Just a question. Ooh, we. A countrywide spokesperson uh, declined to comment, citing privacy concerns. Yeah, privacy concerns. A countrywide, they're all hiding under their desk right now. The Wall Street Journal first reported the story. Though McMahon was in negotiations with Countrywide, the paper said it wasn't clear whether McMahon and his wife would be able to remain in the home. McMahon, you tried doing this, by the way. McMahon was about $644,000 in arrears. That's quite a few payments, even for a house that expensive. That's about, by my calculations, that's about a year's worth of payments. (laughs) How do you get away with not paying for a year? (laughs) Wow. That's when the notice of default was filed. Says your federal regulators have been urging lenders to ease loan terms, but it wasn't clear if that would happen in McMahon's case. I don't wish any ill on Ed McMahon. I, you know, as I said, I revered Johnny Carson, and I met Ed McMahon, and he was just just great to me. And I don't have a bad word to say about him as a person. He was he was just great, and he has called the show, by the way, and I love him to death. I just don't understand how people can can live so close to the edge. I don't understand it. You know, I myself, I've been telling these guys that I work with for the last 12 years that I wanted to buy a house in wine country. And I did not go out there and, you know, put 1% down or 5% down and, and borrow millions and millions of dollars. I waited until I had a lot of money. So I can put a huge down payment. And I have paid, at this point in time, for my newest house, more than 75% of the principal is already paid down. Done. Um, I don't understand how people live like this. I don't understand how they do it. And the amazing thing is, you know, it's one thing uh, when Joe Boring and John Q. Public and Susie Moron are out there, uh, you know, for getting foreclosed upon and running their visa bill up to $73,000. That's stupid enough. But honestly, (laughs) you were sitting next to Johnny Carson for 30 years. How do you not have a couple of nickels in the bank? How do you do that? What is your reaction to this? Don't Don't like like it. it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Don't Like It. The Tom Like It Show. I want 800 800 talk Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Ed McMahon trying to avoid foreclosure on his multi-million dollar Beverly Hills area home. By the way, I don't think that's Beverly Hills. I think it's Beverly Hills adjacent, as we say. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Yes. That's great. 
First call of the hour. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Edward on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, I heard that story in the morning uh, on the news, and I could not believe it. Ed Mud Mayhem. My God. Um, you've had uh, different discussions about this subject with people losing their houses like that, but I do not expect a person of that caliber to... <laughs> to lose this house, and I had the same question, that age, and you do not have a retirement account, you do, I, and I, I'm, I've known the guy forever, too. You, you, you mean you know him personally, or you know him from no, TV? No, 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 I know of him. Yeah. He's been on TV forever. Right. How can you not have something put aside? That's the thing, if you had a job like that, you'd put a couple of bucks away, wouldn't you? Did he drink it all? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And he had that settlement of $7 million with a dog. I didn't know about that. Well, keep in mind, the, that settlement he got for his house, and I had a mold situation in my own house, so I know how this works. He probably had to pay one-third to his attorney or maybe as much as 40%. Correct, yes. And then he had to spend the money fixing the house. My house wow. had black mold back, uh, I discovered it in 2001, and I had to spend uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars tearing all the walls, internal and external, out of the house. Well, but still, for him, $7 million should be nothing. Well, for, that, the, the thing, thing is, the money that he made throughout the, the year? well, that's the thing. The $7 million probably went to rebuilding his house. And paying his attorney. Uh, but how do you not have... I mean, what are you doing borrowing money against your house? What are you doing? <sighs> and countrywide. Uh, yeah, I, I thought they went under. Well, they're still in business because they've been bought by Bank of America. But, uh, you know, the CEO was blown out. And uh, then the next CEO was blown out. And uh, when Bank of America fully takes over, they're not even going to use the countrywide name anymore. I just heard this the other day. Right, right. Wow. And uh, I had a discussion with one of those Joe Blows that bought a house for four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And uh, actually, quite a few weeks ago, they said that they cannot afford to pay any more. And uh, I said, uh, "Well, how much is the house worth right now?" And they said two hundred and seventy-five. And I said, "Can I do you a favor? I'll buy the house for two seventy-five, and you can stay there and pay me rent." Did he say yes? They were looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Seriously. And well, I know a lot of people in this situation, and right now I'm laughing at all those people that did that. But Ed McMahon... <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, if I suddenly had some problem, like I had a broken neck and I couldn't work, and at some point in time uh, the company said, hey, you know, we've waited long enough for you to come back to work. We can't wait anymore. And they, they said, we're not going to pay you anymore, and I couldn't make my mortgage payments. My house, I would sell it for whatever price I could get for it. Exactly. And then, I, I, the thing is, I have 75% equity in my house. So if I bought it for $2.8 million and I can only get one point nine, that's still a lot of money. Yep. How do you have a house that's $5 million or $6 million and you don't have any equity in it? I, how do you do that? I, I don't understand. And I was expecting the pe people at the lower level to do that because they don't know and they don't read the fine print. But, you know, million-dollar houses to go in foreclosure like that? Yeah. And so, exactly, what's his, what is he doing working at that age? Tell you what, when I'm 83, I will not be sitting here. I'm going to tell you right now. No. <laughs> Nobody in you. I will not be coming into work so I can pay my mortgage. It's not going to happen. And, you know, at 83, I'll be somewhere in Bahamas or somewhere. That's right. Retired. That's Dying. right. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Thanks Edward. a lot, Tom. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Alex in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Alex. Hello, Tom. Yes. You know what the old saying is? You better buy when there's blood in the street. Well, not only is that the old saying, it's what I always say, and that's why this year I bought myself a second home. Not last year or five years ago. I, I did it in uh, February of this year. That's what I'm saying. I'm surprised that you haven't bought a couple of them. You know, I'm a stock man just like you are, and I've been watching those financials recently. You know, uh -huh. Bank of America, Wachovia. I've been buying those, those suckers up 
like they're going out of style. Well, I understand now you do know, just to, to get off on a little uh, money talk here for one second, uh, you do know Michael Price, the value investor who used to be with Mutual Series Funds, he, uh, does, he thinks Wachovia is going to go down even further. He's, he's shorting Wachovia. That, that might be the case. I can't time the bottom of it. Right. But, uh, but they're down, what, 50%? That oh, I know. Down. That's good enough for me. It's not going to disappear. And it's not going to disappear. Forget all these people who can't figure out how to run their finances in their houses. Let's talk about the people who are going to come in and, and pick up the stuff for dirt cheap now. That's right. Uh, you have, the way you have to think, and it sounds awful. How do I profit from this? Exactly. <laughs> Can you take me out horse race style? Horse race style, of course. Our favorite horse. Winning at Santa Anita. Here you go. You ready? Yes, I am. I don't know if we're ready. We don't have it in there. We don't have it? We have it on CD. Oh, we have it on CD. We don't have it in there. And is the CD available? Let's make sausage here on the air. Is it going to be findable in a reasonable period of time? Or Yes. This is called vamping, for those of you who trying to, the few young people still trying to get into radio. This is called vamping. Up to the gate, goes in. And away they go. DTB broke well from the outside gate along the inside Harlem. Now they're all lining up on the lead, though. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Now there goes Per for me to kick on. They weren't too keen to get an early leader, but Per for me now going on to do that. And Huss the King is at the back. Four lengths would cover the lot. They run to the 5 8 pole, and it's Purr for me down at the rail, and DTB, the two favorites, stride for stride, as they move down the back stretch just behind that, wink at the girls, racing in behind them, comes Harlem, who's now six off those leaders, and Huss the King, the early trailer. Past a half mile they go, and Purr for me, comfortably in front by a length, DTB, quite content to just sit there in the second spot. Then it's two lengths back to wink at the girls, now coming after them from third. Harlem is still giving them seven length start and three more to Huss the King. They come past the 516s and Purr for me continues to lead them. DTB though being confidently ridden and DTB now cutting into that lead. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Also Harlem running on in the black and even Huss the King running on. Suddenly it's wide open. Homeward bound now and it's DTB who goes on to get the lead. Wink at the girls tackles immediately. Hunk the kick coming home gamely down the inside and Harlem at the rail. Coming for home now and it's DTB up alongside. Wink at the girls. Girls, DTB in front as they run to the wire. DTB's one of the neck. Wink at the girls second. Harlem a close third. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. From Hollywood, it's Tom Likas here on the radio at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ed McMahon trying to stave off foreclosure of his, some say, $6.25 billion home on the cusp of Beverly Hills. According to Wikipedia, Ed McMahon at one time was worth over $200 million. How do you get into a position where you have to stave off foreclosure? Eh? 1-800-5800-TOM, that is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dad, first time, Son, long time. Thank you. I had a, I had an answer to the question that you put out there for uh, Countrywide if they do strictly subprime. No, I didn't say they do strictly subprime. They're, they're known as, I thought they were known as a subprime lender. You know, that's kind of funny since the subprime thing has been so big lately. Um, I worked at Countrywide for a while, and about five years ago when I first started, they had these big tickers on the roof. And I asked my supervisor, you know, what the heck is this ticker for? It looked like a stock ticker. And they were people on hold. And there was literally at the time, the day I started, 400 people on hold. And you had to wait three hours to get a hold of someone on Countrywide's A paper side. They were that busy and that strong at the time. Wow. On their A paper yes, side. Yes, but, but again, they were strong how? They were strong by doing a lot of subprime lending. Keep in mind that when this whole house of cards started to collapse, Angelo Mozillo, the chief executive officer of Countrywide, was uh, was blown out or forced to resign. And uh, then his successor has resigned also. Yeah. No, this is like five or six years ago, though. This which, was is, which was about the time that the mortgages that are blowing up today were being written. 
They actually, the ones that are the problem, the biggest problem, are the short-term fix, two- and three-year fix. Even five- and seven-year fix do create problems as well. But the biggest problem were the I thought the biggest problem was the uh, the uh, adjustable rate mortgages, which had such low rates in 2002 and 2003. Yeah, that's what they are. They, they'll start out fixed for maybe two years, and then they go adjustable. But the first jump is huge. It's like 3%. Right. And people always tell you that they didn't read it or they didn't see it. But being a loan officer and knowing uh, you know tons of loan officers, I know everybody was explaining it. Uh, you know, and the people knew what it was, but everybody just danced it off and said, hey, you know what, I can refi in two years. The market's great. And, you know, I tried to warn a lot of people. I, I know too many people right now, to be honest, perfectly 100% honest, that made m multiple millions of dollars last year as loan officers at some of these companies. And they're moving into apartments now. I'll bet they are. This is, uh, you know, what's going on with Ed McMahon and what I had told your guy earlier is that he's actually the norm, not not the exception. The norm? The norm. A lot of people, it's just the American way to spend more than you make. I, I underwrote it at a lot of these companies for a long time, and almost everybody's overextended. It's were, insane! Yeah, I mean, at, when we were loan officers, we used to be able to get exceptions on, on investor guidelines. And one of the exceptions we would go for all the time was a debt-to-income ratio exception, meaning that they didn't make enough money, but I just wanted to make the deal happen. And the borrower was crying, saying that they had to have the loan, and they'd sell you the story about living out of a, a truck, and, you know, my dog's in the truck, and I moved out of my apartment, I got nowhere to go. And so you feel bad, and you make the deal happen, and then they turn around and, and they get in trouble like this because they didn't refi out or, you know. <sighs> It's outrageous. It's outrageous. And uh, I don't know if Ed McMahon was ever worth $200 million. That's what it says in Wikipedia. Two hundred. How do you go from $200 million to zero? How do you do that? Rick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Rick. I, I, I just don't understand how he goes from $200 million to nothing. I mean, and foreclosing on his home. I mean, what has he been doing the last 50 years? I mean, well, really? that's the thing. I Don't mean, tell me he broke his neck at age 83 and now at 85 he can't pay the mortgage. Don't you right. put a few bucks away? Right. I, I mean, you know, I'm 23 years old and I just bought, you know, a half a million dollar home in San Antonio Heights and, you know, everything but my home is paid for. I don't understand. I mean, I just, it, it's mind boggling. 200 million to nothing. Well, this is what I'm trying to tell people all the time. If you can't afford to put 20 or 25% down on a house, if you can't afford property taxes, homeowners insurance, flood insurance, earthquake insurance, the cost of regular maintenance and repairs on a house, you can't afford to buy a house, period. Right. I mean, I think, except for your home, if you can't afford to pay for it outright, you shouldn't have it. That's but that's the way I was brought, raised. So, I mean, you know, I put 50 grand down on my house, but I've worked for it since I was 16 years old and saved for everything. Right. So I, I just don't understand what was going through his mind over the, few, the last few years. And what, you go to Vegas and lose all his money over the last 50 years? Well, it says in Wikipedia it might have had to do with divorce settlements he had. Also, uh, the, some, the value of some of the real estate uh, was written down over time. But still, it's $200 million. That's one-fifth of a billion. Right. I mean, even if you put away $10 million... But if you lost half your investment, you got $100 million. Right. I mean, the interest rate on that alone, he should have been able to survive the, you know, the last 10, 15 years of his life. Just on the interest rate. Well, if, even if he got 1% interest at his local bank, that would be a million dollars a year. You could live on that. Right. I, so it's just you couldn't problem. live at the corner of Mulholland and Coldwater Canyon, but you could live on that. Right. I mean, you know, the average person makes about $30,000 a year. I just don't understand what the issue is. I don't get it. Thank you, Rick. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Tim on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Good. Well, in defense to Epic Man, you know, he's no ordinary man. He's a celebrity. So? And bottom line here is, you know, it's all about percentage. You know, if you make more, you spend more. Not it's necessarily. True. Not necessarily. And, and you may spend more. 
but the amount you spend, you know, your discretionary spending as a percentage of how much you have should never change. Uh, true. So he lives in a fast lane, so therefore... The know, fast lane? More. He's 85 years old. How fast is the fast lane? <laughs> Some people don't change. Kanye people West people lives in the fast lane. Ed McMahon lives in the corner of Coldwater Canyon and Mulholland. Well, I don't know him personally. I don't know what he does, but, you know, as a celebrity. I mean, I've seen so many celebrities making a lot of money and went bankrupt. You know, look at MC Hammer. Look at... Uh, oh, come on, uh, MC Hammer had Tyson. one hit song. Come on, you can't compare MC Hammer to Ed McMahon. 25, 30 years doing Budweiser commercials alone should set you up for life. Yeah, then in that case, then he should be more complacent to spend more because, you know, hey, I'm making money every year, so I should spend as much as I, I want. It makes no sense. I, look, I make more money than I ever dreamed of. Uh-huh, but you're different. I won't let, I, this will not happen. I won't allow, I waited 12 years to buy my second home. 12 years from the time I decided to do it until I did it. I waited until there was blood in the streets. <laughs> Based on what you're saying, you have the Asian mentality. <laughs> I mean, some Asian buy houses with a suitcase of money, but, you know, Ed McMahon is not one of them. You know, like I said, a lot of celebrities like to, they're used to this, the lifestyle, basically. Well, you know? how sad is that if Ed McMahon ends up having to live in a, you know, d- it, it is, Motel it is, 6? It, it is sad, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not totally surprised, you know, I mean... Uh, he is still a person, you know. I mean, and he likes maybe he likes finer things in life. And Dude, boy. a million a million dollar for me would would be set, you know. You know, but for him, chump change. Who knows? But I think that's it, it, we shouldn't make it bigger than that. What it really is, you it know? is big. When somebody goes from two hundred million dollars to nothing, that's big. <sighs> Not if you spent big. Not if you, you know. I'm, I'm, guess what? You know, the, these stories are not the norm. They are an exception to the rule. Uh, true. Now, therefore, they Johnny speak. Carson wasn't foreclosed upon before he died. Yeah, maybe Johnny Carson has a better um, um, financial management. Well, again, that's what I'm trying to say here. And you know what? If I had $200 million, Warren Buffett would be my financial advisor. <laughs> I'd pay him whatever it cost. Uh, that, that's true. But uh, I guess, you know. I mean, if you knew the army of attorneys and accountants and publicists and whatever that I have, uh, when you make money, you cannot afford to spare a dime. You have to make sure that you've got an army of good people watching out for your cash, watching out for your liabilities. you got what, to. I'm sorry, I cut you off. But what you said earlier that at his stage right now, he still have a publicist. Uh, that that tells you right there, that reinforces your, your, uh, what you, or what I said about him. You know, he still have a publicist right now. Come on. So, you know, no, I, that's famous. what I'm saying. It, the, the, my, as much as I love my publicist, if I had a hint of financial problems, he's the first to go. Exactly, but Ed McMahon's publicist is still there, or, or Spokesman, or whoever it is. Well, I, I, he's there until they, they skip a paycheck or two. <laughs> right, therefore, this, it tells you that this guy's a spender. I mean, or, or he doesn't think much, or I don't know. You know, money and management skill is not one of his forte. I guess not. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at... Blow me up, Tom.com.